Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I would like to start this evening by introducing to you the president of St. Mary's College, Joe Ergo, to welcome you and to welcome our candidates. Good evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's my privilege to serve as the president of St. Mary's College. You may look around and notice there aren't many students here. It is Friday. They're in the library studying. <laughs> we all remember that. We all remember that. I'm pleased to welcome you to tonight's forum, co-sponsored by St. Mary's College and the St. Mary's County chapter of the NAACP. St. Mary's College is proud of our long record of hosting and supporting civic engagement activities in the Southern Maryland community. Tonight, you will hear three candidates who are running for the fifth congressional district seat in the House of Representatives answer questions that have been submitted by local residents. Please join me in welcoming the candidates to tonight's forum, Democratic Party candidate Steny Hoyer. <laughs> Republican Party candidate Charles Lawler. and Libertarian Party candidate H. Gavin Schickel. And it's my pleasure to introduce our co-moderators for tonight's program, St. Mary's County NAACP Chapter President Wayne Scriber. And Professor of Political Science Todd Eberly, Interim Director of the Center for the Study of Democracy at St. Mary's College. Welcome to campus. My name is Todd Eberly. I'm the interim director of the Center for the Study of Democracy. And on behalf of the center and the St. Mary's County branch of the NAACP, it is my pleasure to welcome these candidates and it is my honor to welcome all of you to tonight's forum. I thank the candidates for coming here tonight to take your questions. And I also want to take just one moment to thank the staff of St. Mary's College and the host of volunteers who have made this evening possible. Let's thank them. If you don't mind, instead of giving my normal commercial for the center, I'm going to get right to the rules. All of the questions for tonight will in fact come from you and have come from you. If you would still like to submit a question, we have volunteers in the audience. Raise your hand, they will bring you a three by five card and a pencil so that you can write them down. I can tell you we already have more questions than we could possibly get through if we stayed here until election day. <laughs> your question will be placed in a box and drawn by a panel. This panel is simply responsible for making sure that we don't ask variations of the same question multiple times and to make sure that we ask questions on a variety of topics. Only questions that are directed at all candidates will be asked. We simply lack the time to ask questions limited to any one candidate. The candidates will have 90 seconds to answer each question. A timer in the front row will be keeping track of the time when 30 seconds remain, he will wave a yellow card. When time has expired, he will wave a red card, which apologize, I apologize, it's actually hot pink. <laughs> no one wants to get the pink slip. When that pink slip is waved, the candidates must finish their sentence and nothing more. The ordering of the questioning has been determined at random. Tonight, each candidate will then receive two minutes for a closing remark, but in the interests of time and of answering as many questions as possible, there will be no opening statement. The audience is asked to please make no expressions of support or opposition until the forum has ended. This is simply so that we can get through as many questions as possible. Tonight is your chance to hear from these candidates as they answer your questions you will have your opportunity to express your support or your opposition on Tuesday. Once we are all done this evening, please feel free to be boisterous. The first question tonight will be asked by my co-moderator, Wayne Scriber, president of the St. Mary's County NAACP. Thank you. Mm. 
All right, the first question, will, we will start with Mr. Schickel. And the question is, what is your legislative position relative to partial birth abortion, even in the case of saving the mother's life? I am uh, against partial birth abortion. Uh, I think it's a very brutal and barbaric procedure. However, there are always uh, mitigating circumstances, and sometimes a decision will have to be made. Um, however, as far as I know, medical science has proven that, or shown us that we can determine whether or not these occurrences will arise long before the uh, child becomes, comes to near the full term to the point where the partial birth abortion would have to actually be uh, performed. So I'd say that, you know, with that in mind, it really shouldn't get to that point in the first place. Um, now, my party believes in legalized abortion, and I will stand by that. Mr. Hoyer. I believe that uh, late-term abortion, if that is what uh, is being referred to, uh, should be allowed only in the instances of very serious health uh, challenges to the uh, woman. Uh, I believe earlier-term abortions, as I'm sure all of you know from my record, uh, that decision needs to be made by the woman, uh, her family, uh, and her doctor. Mr. Lawler. I want to first start by thanking St. Mary's College for this opportunity in this forum. Uh, what a wonderful venue. And these patriots that came out today to support their candidates, I also want to thank the NAACP for what they've done and their major role here uh, this afternoon. I don't want to get too far down the road before I do that. Also, for that comment about the students, I remember doing a lot of things on Friday in college. I'm not sure if studying was one of them, but you have an exceptional college if that's the case. You know, I think it's always interesting that the biggest advocates for abortion or those that are already alive. As long as I am serving you and have the ability to do so, I will always be a pro-life candidate. I will always stand for the right of that unborn child. That, that child has to have, that child has to have a voice and I will certainly represent that in all cases. I do know that in the case of the life of a mother, that's a very difficult one. I'm married uh, and I love my wife, my family. I'm sure that's a very difficult decision to make. And it has to be, but there has to be a choice given for that unborn baby, and I will always be the voice of that unborn child. Thank you. The next question will begin with Mr. Hoyer. Do you believe a cap-and-trade law would be beneficial or detrimental to Marylanders, and why? Well, let me uh, say first of all that uh, all of us uh, believe this forum is very important. Uh, we need to discuss the issues in a serious way. This is a serious election, and there are serious challenges confronting our country. I believe that global warming is a scientific reality. It is not something that somebody's making up, and I think it must be addressed. Uh, acid rain was a problem that we confronted, and we addressed it with a similar program to what you refer to as cap and trade. Uh, we address that uh, problem, and for the most part, we have resolved the issue of acid rain, and we resolved it at 20 percent of the cost that was projected. Uh, we passed through the House of Representatives a bill known as cap and trade, uh, which seeks to reduce the carbon that we are emitting uh, from our world. Uh, it seeks to reduce that uh, because it wants to make sure that our globe can survive, that we can survive uh, healthy, uh, that we can survive economically, uh, and that we can have a world uh, that uh, uh, treats that which God has given us with the care that he would expect. So the answer to that question is we need to address this issue. Mr. Lawler has said on numerous occasions that that bill has passed. It has not passed. It's pending in the United States Senate for further consideration. Thank you. Mr. Lawler. Just a correction that it's been through Congress, but it has not passed through the Senate. Um, let's deal with the actual issue just for a second. Outside of the fact that it's detrimental, uh, outside of the fact that this cap and trade is detrimental to business, 
both small and large business. It further pushes business overseas, and that's a problem, and pushes jobs overseas. And that's a problem when we have a real unemployment uh, rate of over 14 and a half, 15 percent across our country. In addition, it imposes unfair practices on businesses here in North America that are not placed on other businesses in other international communities. So, which kind of makes the, un the, the, the competition very unfair as well. The cap and trade bill is not right for our country. And then one final piece too. It, it's very difficult to try to measure how much carbon dioxide any company gives off. After all, these are things that we breathe out. See, I believe this is not a partisan issue. It really isn't. It's about what makes sense and what is common sense. If we breathe out carbon dioxide and then the trees and, and, and nature takes that in and gives us oxygen, I don't see where there's such an issue where cap and trade is concerned. We're going to have to come back to everyday common sense issues and not just throw stuff on a wall to see if they stick. It just doesn't make sense. It's not right for business. It's not right for our country. Thank you, Mr. Schickel. Well, I believe everybody in this room probably enjoys breathing clean air. I know I do. Uh, however, I feel that laws such as this cap and trade bill are the absolute wrong direction to go in. Now, we've made great improvements in this nation over the last few decades as, as far as the environment is concerned. However, this bill and bills like it are the absolute wrong direction to go, and I will not support any, one, any cap and trade legislation whatsoever. Okay, the next question, we will start with Mr. Lawler. Will you introduce and active, actively support legisl legislation to mandate term limits for all members of Congress? Wow, somebody did me a favor on that question. Uh, without question, term limits are absolutely the way to go for Congress as well as for the U.S. Senate. I believe that part of the, the, the problem that we currently have in our nation is this entitlement mentality. Anytime you can stand up in North Point High School and tell your constituents that I'm going to go it alone whether the majority of my constituents are with me or not, that guarantees to me one thing. Someone has lost touch with their constituency, the Constitution, and their responsibility and accountability to everyday American people. But if you pass effective term limits, it will allow for people to go to D.C., do their job, and then come back and live under the same laws they passed on their citizens. I don't know where we get the audacity to think that we rise above those that we are sent to serve, especially when our tax dollars afford the very foundation of life that they're provided. So in terms of that, to keep from the aristocracy aristocratic mindsets and monarchy postures. We have to do something where it comes to term limits and send folks back home to live under the laws that they passed amongst their citizens. I'm an avid fan for term limits, and even if you don't term limit learn me, I certainly will term limit myself. Thank you for that question. Mr. Schickel. Well, I absolutely support term limits. <laughs> I support the six-term term limit for members of the House and two-term term limit for members of the Senate. You know, we have term limits for, for vice president and president. I don't see why we shouldn't have term limits for members of the legislative branch also. You know, they spend 30 years or more in government and then just do whatever they want to, basically. And mm, 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 we, mm. the people, have to live under the laws and we're expected to follow the laws and they just break the laws whenever they want to, you know. That's an absurd statement. <laughs> That's an absurd statement. I haven't statement. broken any laws. Uh, Do you have uh, two my, covered my, boathouses on your property? No. You don't? Mr. No. Mr. Yeah. Schickles, well, you, Mr. Sorry, Hoyer's sorry, answer. Sorry, this sir. is a, we're getting and, out of, and, off and the, the track here. And if you lived here, you might know the answer to that question. Anyway. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me say that uh, we have term limits. This is what this forum is about. This is what this forum is about. What you're really saying is you want to preclude the people's uh, judgment from being made. What you're really saying, my two friends to my right, is we can't beat Hoyer, get rid of Hoyer by legislative fiat. Uh, 